Hi, my name is Danielle Conrad. I'm the campaign director for Nebraskans for Better Wages. We are working very hard to secure an increase in the state minimum wage for the November 2014 ballot. Um, we know that tens of thousands of Nebraskans rely on minimum wage to pay the bills and meet their family's basic needs. And without action, um, they will fall further behind each and every year. We can't wait for Congress to act and we can't wait for the legislature to act. We need to utilize direct democracy to get this issue before the voters in November. In order to accomplish that, we are utilizing volunteers from all across this great state to help us go into their communities, to engage their friends and neighbors, and talk about the importance of this issue, and asking them to sign the petition so that Nebraskans have a right to vote on whether or not we should increase our state minimum wage um, over the course of the next two years, up to $9 an hour. We are so thankful that you have given your time and talent uh, to support us in this critical effort. We're going to work through some of the basic ground rules, do's and don'ts, and tips for signature gathering that you need to think about in order to be effective and in order to ensure full compliance with all election laws. If you have any questions or concerns, there are no silly questions. Please feel free to ask the campaign if something is unclear or if you need additional guidance. That's what we're here for. We want to help you um, as we work together in this effort to secure an increase in the state minimum wage to benefit Nebraskans working families. So let's move through some of the high points that we need to think about. And there are additional materials on the website that you can take home, that you can print, that you can download and utilize and share with family and friends as well. So we thank you for your time. We're excited to get into this quick training and then to have folks fan out across this great state and start gathering signatures in support of our effort. These are the petitions that we're going to be circulating. Uh, they are um, generated by our office. So that's one thing that's important to remember because they have our important disclaimer and unique identifiers. We're not, um, if you need more petitions, just let us know. Don't go ahead and, and head out and start printing your own petitions because we need to ensure that they adhere to the proper format and have the appropriate indicia and other identifying marks on them. Um, but that being said, here are some of the basic rules that we need to think about. If you're circulating petitions for us, you need to be 18 years old, old or older on the day you carry the petition. Um, unfortunately, we can't have people that will be 18 by the time they, they vote in November carrying petitions. They need to be 18 the day they circulate petitions. If you're a paid circulator or working for a campaign or another organization that is paying you to gather signatures, you cannot be paid by the signature. Um, so that's something that we need to be very thoughtful about. Uh, additionally, circulators cannot offer anything of value um, to signers to induce them to sign our petition. Now this includes not only money, but it includes stickers, it includes pizza, it includes candy, it includes gum, it includes pencils. You can offer nothing of value to secure a signature. Um, so that's something important to keep in mind. Um, additionally, as you will see on the petition sheets as they come out to you, by state law, each petition sheet can only hold up to 20 signatures. Now, if you have less than 20 signatures on it, that's okay. Feel free to go through the process to have it formalized and turn into the campaign. But you cannot add lines, you cannot add additional signatures beyond the space that 20 is afforded to on the original documents. Um, the other thing that's important to remember is that if you are a volunteer circulator, make sure that you're carrying a circulator, a petition that indicates that. Um, at the top in large red font. It, there are two types of petitions, one for paid circulators, one for volunteer circulators. So make sure that you're carrying the right petition um, for your classification. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact, contact the campaign and we can walk you through that. Um, one of the most important things about gathering is that there's a spot right here on the top of the petition where you can fill, fill in a county. Um, so here we're standing in beautiful downtown Omaha in the middle of, of Douglas County. Now this petition would fill in for Douglas County and then only signers that are registered to vote in Douglas County would be able to fill this sheet out. Um, if you happen to come in contact with visitors um, to Omaha from Cass or Sarpy County, they would need to sign a different petition, one that says Cass or Sarpy um, on the top of that in order to qualify. Now that we've had a chance to work through some of the ground rules, 
um, we want to really focus on some of the most important points for all volunteer circulators to remember. Um, it is critical, it is required under state law that every circulator needs to personally, personally read the object statement that's listed at the top of each petition to each signer. Um, they need to read it in full. They cannot read it at a large gathering to a, a variety of people and then hope that everybody who heard it um, would qualify to decide. You need to personally read the object statement to every signer. For example, the object of this petition is to increase the minimum wage rate, rate for Nebraska employees in two steps, from the current $7.25 per hour to $8 per hour beginning January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015, and then to $9 per hour beginning January 1, 2016. If signers or volunteers are interested in learning more about the measure, on the back side of the petitions is the full statutory language that we are seeking to enact. Um, but what is required under state law is that each circulator personally reads the object statement on the front side of the petition to each signer. Then additionally, you need to be able to personally verify and witness the signature of each signer um, when they go forward to put in their signature, printed name, date of birth, address, um, hometown, and zip code. So for example, what's important to remember in this regard is you should never leave petitions unattended. Um, if you're at a community event and you need to take a break, um, make sure that you take the petitions with you. Do not leave them on a card table. Do not leave them at a signing station where somebody may sign the petition outside of your personal awareness or otherwise tamper with the petitions. Um, so it is critically required under state law that you personally read the object statement to each signer and that you personally witness them sign the petition. Um, so those are some of the most important things to remember. Um, additionally, when you are finished with circulating your petitions, um, there is a space at the bottom here where you're going to need to um, work with a notary, either arranged by the campaign or on your own accord, um, to verify that the information on the petition um, adheres with uh, what you personally witnessed. You fill in fully your contact information here. The notary has a space for their information over there, um, and you put in the number of signatures that you've gathered. So again, every petition sheet does not need to be complete um, in terms of 20 signatures, but they do need to be fully complete in having the county listed in the top here and then fully completing out the uh, circulator information and the notary information on the bottom. So once you've completed that process with gathering signatures and having the petitions notified, they need to be returned to the campaign offices so that we can get those entered into our tallies and counts and get the signatures um, verified and validated as we seek to meet our goals for the July 3rd submission date. Um, we have offices in Lincoln and Omaha. There's contact information on the website for how to access those. And if you're in outstate Nebraska, please contact the campaign and we'll be happy to make arrangements with you uh, to secure your petitions and ensure that they are a part of our important effort. Now, when it comes to important things for signers to remember, one of the most important things to remember is that a signer can only fill in and sign on their own behalf. They cannot sign for a spouse, they cannot sign for a child, they cannot sign um, for a neighbor. No matter how supportive that, that neighbor, spouse, or child might be, signers can only sign on their own behalf. They need to fully fill in the information asked for on the petition form to the best of their ability and as closely as possible as it matches their actual voter registration. So for example, um, if you're visiting with a signer and his name is Robert Smith and he wants to sign the petition, he shouldn't sign as Bob Smith if he's not registered to vote as Bob Smith. He should sign as Robert Smith or however else he is actually registered to vote. Um, additionally, if, say for example, people at the same address are signing in succession, they cannot use um, symbols or ditto marks or otherwise to indicate the same address. They need to, each signer needs to fully complete each line that is asked for. However, from time to time, people might make a mistake when they're filling in the petition. That's okay. There's no need to black it out or scribble it out. Um, the guidance from the Secretary of State's office indicates the best thing to do is just to put a simple line through um, that uh, information that was provided in error and to move on to the next line and, and to start again. Um, additionally, signers cannot accept anything of value as an inducement to sign the petition. Um, and this is a very critical aspect of state law which we are adhering to in every single way possible. 
Um, obviously, clear writing makes it easier to verify and validate. Um, so take your time and, and try to have some sort of a clipboard or other thing available to assist people when they, they are signing the petition. We have additional legal guidance on the website that we'll ask you to download and take a review of um, in regards to where you can gather. The general rule of thumb to remember in that regard is that public spaces um, are welcoming to this type of activity. This is core political speech that is uh, widely protected by our constitutional rights. So if you're gathering um, in a public space, feel free to um, engage signers and voters and alert them to our petition and, and ask them to sign and then work through the steps that we just talked about. If you are on private property, you need to adhere to the directions of the private property owner at all times. If you have any questions about the location where you are gathering, um, just feel free to contact the campaign and let us know. Um, always, always, we encourage all volunteers, all circulators, all campaign staff, all supporters to always be polite, to have a lot of fun, and always take the high road um, as you're out in engaging our citizenry in a very exciting effort of direct democracy. We're working hard to support working families in Nebraska. We support, um, we are, are thankful for your efforts. Uh, they are critical to helping us ensure success and qualifying for the ballot. Um, again, thank you for your time. Let us know any questions and let's go get this done.